thank you very much, uh, Claire, for your most kind, dear friend introduction. <laughs> we go back a while. And I want to thank my sister, Marucci, for her most gracious welcome uh, every time. Wonderful to be on Turrible Country, my sister. I live on Turrible Country, actually, uh, over at the Gap. Uh, to all of you, thank you for coming and happy National Reconciliation Week. And what a week it's been. The pendulum is swinging and we have the great opportunity to strike while the iron's hot. We need you with us on our next journey. And I know you'll answer the call, especially with an impending referendum for a voice to Parliament, long, long overdue. But let's not get too excited because um, there is a need for a question that will get us over the line in terms of a, of a successful referendum. And uh, of course, there will be a no campaign which will be run and it will be ugly. It will be as ugly as the um, uh, marriage equality campaign. So strap up and come on the ride with us. That is our plea to you to do that because we can't do it alone. We constitute 3% of the population. We need the other 97%. And I really do think the multicultural communities are the sleepers in this. They underestimate you, your power, and how you can get behind your First Nations peoples. What we've seen also is a magnificent increase in First Nations politicians across the board. We have seen um, the Honourable Linda Burney, who will become our first woman Minister for Indigenous Affairs. How good is that? <laughs> a woman like myself, who uh, were both on the Second Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation in the 90s. We've carried it through and she always has reconciliation in her heart. We've carried it through on the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation. I've been the co-chair of Reconciliation Australia and now I'm the patron with the wonderful uh, Dame Quentin Bryce for Reconciliation Queensland Incorporated. So my struggle uh, and my journey has been over 30 years, um, uh, just uh, under half my lifetime. And I've experienced all highs and lows. Uh, and right now I'm on pretty much a high. And having seen those beautiful children perform, uh, how good is this going to be? I have, um, on, a, on another note, I've been attending many writers' festivals this year and have never felt such an engaged crowd and minds. When once you get six people in the audience, they are packed out now, and a new generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander writers uh, warms my heart and their books are witnessing the renaissance of Aboriginal arts. I point to the preface that I did, but the stunning book from Debbie Bargelli, who is with us today and who will be talking later, Unmasking the Racial Contract. A superb book, and um, please feel like you want to buy it, because I, I have many copies, but you can't buy them off me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I want to say that um, uh, we are not, uh, not any longer a black and white community, as Australia would want you to believe. Since the theft of our land, many new arrivals have graced our shores. And I, for one, welcome this in all its various hues. I am grateful that my son is a descendant from an Afghan Kamalia and an Aboriginal woman. I am grateful that a scholarship for refugee 
and migrant students established by the Islamic Council of Victoria in 2017 has been named after me and provides assistance to students at La Trobe Uni. And I am grateful that you are all here today to think about your role in reconciliation. No matter how small you think it is, there is no excuse for you to not know about us anymore. I suspect you hear all the stereotypes about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples when you first arrived. Among those told to me are not to go to certain areas, e.g. the valley, because we inhabit those places. In fact, I've heard they don't work, they are dirty, you don't look Aboriginal at all. They never did anything for this country. So on and so on. Racism pure and simple. But please teach your children not to repeat the sins of the past. That this will enable us certainly to have more productive and fruitful relations. And I must say too, Marucci didn't say it, but she has um, two beautiful African, Aboriginal African children, young girls, magnificent. Um, so there are many intermarriages and collaborations here. And they're being formed everywhere as the population grows. My dear friend, Maria Demopoulos from Melbourne, and I have been working together for decades with varying degrees of success to bring about a better understanding and to bring our communities closer together. A criticism I have of the peak body, Reconciliation Australia, is that they have no diversity on their board. For years I have been requesting they have ethnic groups represented on the board to reflect the growing and the diverse population that we have now in Australia. To no avail. I see their most recent appointment has been another white male, along with other First Nations peoples. As good as he is in seniority of his company, RA needs to wake up and show leadership because we are moving on now. I am so frustrated uh, with, uh, with the non-representation uh, of other people. And this is why we all need to do better and connect up. Really, it's not rocket science, is it? And believe me, we won't bite you unless you bite us. <laughs> What we've been embarking on in this state, fair state of Queensland in reconciliation terms has been um, a path to treaty. Now, I've been involved with that over three years now. Um, I'm very perplexed, but not surprised, that action is not happening sooner than it should be. Government is not good at implementing recommendations of reports, for instance, the Royal Deaths in Custody, Social Justice, and the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation as well. We had handed down our final report as the Treaty Advancement Committee in February. We were supposed to launch that in June, and what a wonderful time it could have been, and what an opportunity lost that it had not occurred this week, National Rec Week. Well, the government has been brave and it has made change. And Queensland government, you have to be brave in supporting treaty and thank you for that today. With your huge investment last budget, we thank you. And I thank you for this. But now make change and action it please. There is no reason to delay, the consultations are done, plans delivered upon, how to progress and so on. 
There have been the excuses, of course, of uh, COVID and the Olympics, but come on, there are people as well that need to be invested in and need to be cherished and walk with our other brothers and sisters. We have been patient for so long and we are ready to go. We need the rise of the momentum now in voice treaty truth and we really don't need to have it subsumed in federal government issues. This is about Queensland and we are there. There are many things that um, we could even um, ponder upon as well. There is the whole idea that, um, you know, our relationship needs to be brought together again and we need to really concentrate on that. And uh, in saying that, you know, I know that uh, because we all carry mixed blood in our veins, I don't know who, where my white blood comes from. I'm a product of uh, rape of my grandmothers on both sides. So I don't know them, they have never come to claim me. But you know what? I pray it's bloody Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Need to break that up, eh? <laughs> yeah. um, actually, sometimes when I tell that joke, people just kind of freeze, you know, in their seats, but you know, we've got to get over it. Um, so um, as time, grows near to a treaty in Queensland, the aspect of truth-telling needs to be told. This will require all our groups getting on board. We as a nation have never really come to terms in knowing our history and owning it. There are many unpalatables and brutality to uncover. And the resources are there. Please educate yourself and your families. That's all you have to do. You have to be brave and you have to make change. In conclusion, I want to say that life for our people has never been, never been easy. Uh, I can see now that we are actually being able to embrace a, um, a country now that will look to us and give back to what we have lost over these many years. It's not fair, it's been a long time coming, but I see now um, in my later years, there are really truly positive signs. I invite you to be part of the change that we will experience at least definitely in the next 10 years. So, once again, what a molly to you all, and I hope that we will all be able to walk to this road together and um, certainly get through and not fall off the other side. Thank you.